my name is Laura. Today, I am going to be taking you on a crash course into natural dyeing. If you're brand new to it, don't worry. As long as you've got some kitchen scraps and a few tools, you should be able to do some natural dyeing. So for today's intro, we are going to be getting started using some kitchen scraps, something that I hope everybody has at home, or at least it's pretty easily accessible. We're going to be dyeing with onions. So yellow onions, sweet onions, cooking onions, whatever you call them where you are, these onions have a brown sort of gold papery skin. It just peels off super easily. And usually that would be garbage. We would just get rid of that or compost it or whatever. What we're going to do is we are going to simmer it in hot water and coax all of that beautiful orange gold color out. And hopefully by the end of this, you're going to either have a garment, a piece of fabric or some yarn with a really nice color to it. I've been doing natural dye for several years now. It's one of my favorite things to do to pass time. It's a beautiful work of art at the end. And for some people, it even ends up being a business. So I've got these three little balls of yarn here. I just wanted to show you some of the variety that you can achieve from yellow onion skins. Obviously, you can get a nice bright yellow, but you can also get a really beautiful sort of gold tone all the way to an army green. All of these are so super saturated and the change in color is just from changing the acidity, the alkalinity and the temperature of your dye bath. So let me go into a little bit of background on natural dyes and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about some of the stuff that you're gonna to wanna to know. This is such a great project. You can do it with the kids, you can do it with your friends and you can do it alone, it's still fun. It does take a little bit of time, there's a little bit of patience involved, but in the end, you have a beautiful work of art that you can transform into something else. If it's yarn, you could do a garment like a button-up shirt, 100% cotton. So we're going to be doing two different dyes today. We're going to do cotton. I'm going to be dyeing 100% cotton pillowcase, and we're going to be doing wool. So those two fibers are very different when taking dye. Cotton is a plant, so it's a cellulose fiber. Long, skinny fibers that it has a hard time for dye to get into because they're so structural. Protein, on the other hand, which is silk, merino wool, any wool really, anything that comes off of an animal is a protein fiber. And those are all covered in frayed ends. So they love to suck up dye and they always come out Oh, much more magical, I find, than the cotton does, for natural dyes, that is. But we are gonna do both, just in case you want to do something cotton, but it needs to be cotton. No synthetic fibers. They're not gonna hold on to the dye, so it's just not worth it. As you can see in my hand, I've got three different balls of yarn. The cool thing about natural dye is it's kind of a science and kind of an art. You can play with the pH, making it more acidic or more alkaline, you can play with the temperature of your dye bath and you're gonna get some significantly different outcomes. So for example, this bright yellow one is dyed with onions, but I pre-mordanted, hold on to that term, um, in alum and that was it. This golden one, I pre-mordanted in alum, again, hold on to that term. And then after the dye bath was done, I added a little bit of wood ash lye solution. Don't worry, I'm gonna explain that as well. For this green one, which is so cool, because from yellow to green, this green one is actually achieved by adding iron particles this dissolved in vinegar. So it's kind of an iron vinegar water solution, um, and it changes the color to green. It's very fun. It's very chemically creative. We're not gonna be working with anything toxic today, so don't fret, but you are going to need a few supplies. Don't worry, I'm gonna go into all of those terms I mentioned and a whole bunch more. So what you're going to need for this project, you're going to need some dish soap, just basic gentle dish soap, nothing too crazy. I'm using palm olive, but it doesn't matter. You're also going to need wool wash if you're using wool, if you're dyeing wool. Uh, if you're dyeing cotton, not, not necessary. You're also going to need 
some washing soda. That's if you are doing cotton. Because cotton has those firm, long, skinny cellulose um, structures, you need something to sort of break it down. And baking soda is not quite strong enough. Dish soap is not quite strong enough. You're gonna need something a little bit tougher. Washing soda is a great alternative. If you don't have washing soda at home, that's okay. You can make it yourself. There are tons of recipes online, but a basic rundown of what it is, is you wanna boil a bunch of baking soda in a pot with no water, a chemical reaction happens and shifts it from baking soda to washing soda. You're also going to need some gloves. They don't need to be nitrile. It's not to keep any toxic stuff out. It's mostly just to keep your hands safe from temperature and from getting stained from your natural dye solution. It's a really strong pigment, so you will end up with yellow fingers if you don't wear gloves. Definitely wear some gloves. You're also going to need some cheesecloth. I say need, to me it's a need. You could definitely use a strainer or a sieve. I've used an old cotton uh, dishcloth before or a tea towel, just something to strain out all of the onion bits from your dye bath before dyeing your fabric or your yarn. You're going to need some kitchen tools. I just have a couple of plastic spoons these are not for any other use. While you're doing natural dye, even though it is significantly less problematic, let's say, than some synthetic dyes, you don't want to be using food stuff with dye stuff. You should have separate materials for when you're using your natural dye versus when you're cooking. I don't cook with these. These are only used for dyeing. You'll need some measuring cups as well. I've got what, uh, three fourths, three fourths of a cup and a two cup. This will be for scooping water back and forth, but also to measure your pre-mordant and your washing soda. Now I'm back to the pre-mordant part. I told you I would come back to it. So I'm gonna be using alum, aluminum sulfite, which is a white pickling salt. You can get it in the pickling section of your grocery store. Um, you can also get it on Amazon. I got it on Amazon for like, it's a little bit cheaper on Amazon just because you can get it in bulk for dyeing as opposed to in a teeny little container for pickling, but easily accessible. And what it does is it chemically bonds the pigment from your dye, the onion skins, to your fiber, the wool. It creates a chemical bond so that the dye is permanent. This doesn't work for cotton. This is not meant for cotton. This is meant for protein fibers or wool. Again, non-toxic, but still don't eat it and I mentioned before, iron water. So this is a really fun homemade crafty type of thing that you can do at home. Basically, you have to find some rusty bits and bobs. So I used to live in the city of Toronto and I would go rusty things collecting. Basically, I would keep a pair of work gloves in one of my purses and a Ziploc bag. Anytime I found a screw on the floor or a washer or a nut or a bolt, I would add it to that Ziploc bag once I had a full Ziploc bag, I made some iron water. What you do for that, you mix a 50-50 solution of white vinegar and water, and then you add your rusty things in, as many as you've got. It's not a real science as far as um, how much rust is the right amount of rust, but you leave it for anywhere between two weeks and a month, and then you're gonna be left with this very sort of strange smelling rusty liquid. You remove all of the um, little pieces, all of your nuts and bolts, and then you'll have this, this clear liquid, which is the vinegar, and this dark gray black powder that mixes in, and that's your rust, rust particles. And that is a premordant, which means it can do that bonding thing from the protein fiber to the dye, but it can also be used as a color modifier. So, this is great if you want to get more than one color on your skate of yarn. I think we should just use it so that you can see some of the cool colors that come from onion skins with just some stuff that you've got around. Of course, you're going to need some things that you want to dye. I'm going to be using this 100% superwash merino, so soft, it's such a soft wool. Use whatever you've got as long as it's wool for the yarn because that's what I'm using for my tutorial. And I'm also going to be doing a white pillowcase, just 100% cotton white pillowcase, nothing too crazy. You can definitely use something else, just make sure it's 100% cotton. Okay, possibly most importantly, um, even though I'm not gonna pick it up and show you, I'll point at it. 
You need a big pot, a really big pot. I'm using a canning pot. It's one of my mom's old canning pots for when she made like tomato sauce. Um, she got a new one, so I got the old one. This is a perfect size. It just needs to be big. Ideally, you would have something non-reactive, so that stainless steel, um, ceramic, or glass. That way the color won't be affected by the pot you're boiling it in. If you use a copper pot or a cast iron pot, it's going to modify your color because little bits of those metals are going to leach into the dye bath and shift the color. It can be really interesting, but if you're achieving a specific color or trying to, it can be a little irritating. I also have a second pot on the stove. That is, I would say it's optional, but it is highly recommended to have two pots. The second pot doesn't need to be as large, but it just makes it easier to complete the dye project. One is going to be where the yarn and fabric sit before the dye happens to it, and then the other pot will be where we're actually making the dye. And I think last but not least, we've got onion skins. As much as you can find, as much as you can collect, I just thought kind of every time we buy onions, I peel the skins off and I put them in a bag. And then I add to it every time we get onions. So I've got a pretty good stash, but even the skins from one three pound bag of onions, the standard size that you get at the grocery store, that's more than enough for this project. I almost forgot. There is one more ingredient that is actually, it's impossible to do this project without it, but it's often forgotten. Water. You're gonna need water. I'm using rainwater. I like to use rainwater because I live out in the country, so I can just have rainwater collection systems. And the pH apparently is at a neutral, more neutral point. You're gonna have the best water when it's rainwater. I haven't seen a real difference from my tap water to rainwater, but I will let you know today I am using rainwater. You're going to need a large amount of rainwater to pre-wash your fabric and your yarn. You're going to need water again to pre-mordant the yarn and the fabric, and then you're gonna need water again for the dye bath. So it's pretty much three large pots of water. And I think that's everything that we need for this project. So wash your hands, get your gloves ready, and let's do it. Mm -hmm.